Hi, my name is Sanjoy Chaudhary. I'm a data enthusiast and love working with technologies like big data, data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, as well as the traditional data warehousing and business intelligence systems. I've worked with various Fortune 500 companies as a data management consultant, some of which are HP, FedEx, Unisys, and also have worked with the government of India. One of the prestigious projects that I was involved in was Aadhaar, wherein we developed a system for enrollment and biometric authentication of more than 1.2 billion residents of India. Apart from my consulting activities, I'm passionate about sharing my knowledge and experience in information management with young minds. So what exactly is information management? Well, information management basically is the process of managing the life cycle of data. So what does it do? Identifies data as an organizational asset, creates policies and processes for accessing data and information, right? It creates systems for acquiring the data, external data as well as internal data, and also creates applications for cleansing, massaging, storing the data, right? Most importantly, all this is done for the purpose of extracting information out of the data, right? Information that can be used by the organizations for improving upon their business and operational processes. And last but not the least, it discusses or determines how to retard the data once it has lived its useful value. Information management is an activity that we realize all organizations need to undergo to remain competitive in today's market. So where does data scientists fit into the scheme of things? Well, data scientists analyze, process and model the data, okay, as well as interpret the results for creating actionable plans for the companies. Thus, data scientists are an integral, a very important part of the information management system. Let's look at some of the sources of data that get fed into the information management applications. We've heard of the poem, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. So also we have data, data everywhere, but it's very difficult to create some kind of an insight out of the data. So where does the data come from? Well, we have legacy applications, then we have the MRPs, ERPs, CRM, etc. We have third party applications as well as custom built applications used by most organizations. These are one of the sources of data, primarily the traditional source of data. Next, over the last few years, we've become familiar with social media. So social media is another area where a lot of data is getting generated. We have data from audio video files and also documents and emails. This data was there earlier as well, but the organizations were not uh, analyzing this data so much. With the advent of IoT and IIoTs, we have data coming from various sensors, machine data from server logs, as well as call logs. So we see that in today's world, there's a lot of data getting generated from different systems and applications, both within and outside of an organization. There are primarily three types of data. We have the structured data, semi-structured data, and the unstructured data. Structured data is found in RDBMS, CSV files, Excel files, etc. Semi-structured data is primarily data that is found in server logs, XML files, NoSQL databases. 
while unstructured data is found in chats, SMS, video and audio files, documents, etc. Here is an example of how a structured data looks like. We've all seen CSV files and Excel files as well as data in relational tables, right? Here we have a very defined structure. We have a set of columns and each row of data adheres to the columns that are defined from before. Next we look at an example of semi-structured data. Here is an external file, right? So we have a structure here, an overall structure, but if we look deeply, we see that each customer, okay, has a different order detail and hence the order detail data is different for each customer. So though we have an overall structure in the data, still it is fluid to a certain extent, right? So that is the reason why it is called semi-structured. Same with this formatted JSON data on the left, right? The first two person IDs have three names, a first name, middle name, and last name. The person ID with 295 has only a first name and a last name. So we do not have the middle name a key at all. Next, here is an example of unstructured data. As the name suggests, there is absolutely no structure to it. Left is a chat snippet and on the right a word document. We see there is absolutely no structure to either of this kind of data. That's the reason why it's called unstructured data. Let's quickly take an overview of what relational databases are, right? The traditional or structured data, okay, is primarily stored in relational database management systems. We all know that. So what happens in a relational database management system? We have data which is logically stored in tables, which are again logically related to one or more different tables and that's how we create a relationship between the data. This uh, relationship okay, allows us to make changes to the database schema without affecting the system's ability to access data. We can make changes to the schema but the underlying data that is already there uh, does not get affected by the change of schema within the rules of relational database management system. The data is stored in columns and rows and can be accessed using a structured query language. The traditional information management systems okay, were primarily consisted of systems which were running in silos such as the ERPs, MRPs or other custom built systems within an organization. Then came the age of data warehouses, where the enterprise-wide data was cleansed, massaged and stored for extracting information across different business processes. One important thing is, all this time the data was primarily internal, right? We were using data that was getting generated from within the organization. There was no external data that was being fed into the traditional information management systems. Here is a sample management information system architecture. What we see here is architecture for a manufacturing MIS. So different processes from the manufacturing uh, division feed data into the manufacturing MIS and then this data from this MIS is analyzed to generate reports, dashboards and any other kind of output for analyzing how the manufacturing process is working, whether there are any issues in the manufacturing process or not, and how to improve any processes if required. Like the manufacturing MIS, an organization can have other MIS uh, processes as well. The disadvantage of this kind of system is you can only analyze the data from one process. Each process is basically uh, capturing data in silo and you can analyze the data for that particular process only. Cross-process data analysis is very difficult with these kinds of 
architectural system. Overcome this challenge, uh, industry came up with the decision support systems, the data warehouse and BI architectures. In a data warehouse and BI architecture, what happens is that the data from different processes within an organization is fed into a enterprise data warehouse through the process of ETL, the extract, transform and load process. Once the data is there in the enterprise warehouse, then the BI tools can use the data to generate OLAP cubes for doing different kinds of data analysis such as roll up, roll down, slicing, dicing, etc. And they can also generate the regular and ad hoc reports, which could be used by the senior management to understand how the different processes of the organization are performing. So if there is a issue in one process, which is negatively affecting the other processes, it is much easier to capture the issue from analyzing data in an enterprise data warehouse. So instead of analyzing data in silos in MIS, organizations moved on to analyzing data in the enterprise warehouse.